G'day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we will learn how to make this really cute and easy cowl. The yarn that I'm using for this project is from redheart.com. Redheart.com is a great place for inspiration for your next project. They have a new look on their website so make sure you check it out. All the links that you need are in the description box below. So let's get started on the lesson. A free written pattern can be found on my website. The link that you need is in the description box. For our supplies we're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye, a pair of scissors, a crochet hook to go with your yarn. I'm using a 5mm crochet hook. This is also a H size hook. And I'm going to use Red Heart Super Saver. And I'm going to use the colour Buff for the, my main project. You also need a contrasting colour to go around the opening around the face. I do have a great video that shows you how to wash this yarn to make it nice and soft. And this is a project that I actually started last night so I didn't have very good lighting to film so I've actually already done the cow section. So I'm going to show you on a smaller piece exactly what I did. So I'm going to make a smaller one just for the video because you only, only really only need to show you two rows of this project. But if you're wondering how many chains I did for my beigey coloured one, for the buff coloured one, I had a hundred chains and then I joined. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a slip knot. You can make this however you like. Plenty of different ways to do that. And we're going to make a chain. And I'm going to just chain 20 just for the project. But I chained 100 chains. And to get our sizing, what you want to do is measure your head. And I'll do that right now. My head is 58 centimetres or about 23 inches. So let's just grab one I've already made. And it's just over 15, it's just about 15 and a quarter inches across. So it's uh, about 30 inches around. And what I did is I measured my head so I had 23 inches or about 58 centimetres. And then I added one or two inches onto that so that I could actually get the cowl over my head. Because that's very important, otherwise you can't wear it. So if you wanted to double over your cowl, you could make your chain a lot longer. But if you just want to make it just wrap once, you just make it one or two inches longer than your head measurement. Of course, this isn't going to fit anybody unless it's it might be fit Barbie. So what we're going to do is we're going to join our chain. And to join our chain so that it doesn't twist, I actually had this question on one of my YouTube videos. Now, I could never figure out how to get it right, but it's really easier than you think. When you look at your chain, it's flat on the flat side, of course, because it's the flat side. And the back side, that's, that's the front side, the flat bit, and then the back bit has the bumps. See how there's bumps on the bottom? Well, that's the back side of your work. And what you need to do is when you join your chain, keep the chain facing the flat side. So this is the front of the chain, the flat bit there. Keep it facing you at all times. So when you twist it around to join, you're actually joining into the front of the chain. So see how the flat side is facing me the whole way around. That's what you want to do. Then you're going to put your chain, your sorry, your crochet hook into the chain from the front side of the work, and it's still all facing in the same direction. It will want to twist, especially if it's a lot bigger chain, but it's all in the same direction. Then we're going to do our slip stitch. So put, I'm going to grab our yarn and do a slip stitch. And that is jane, uh, jained, 
that is joined and the chain is all facing the same direction see how it's all flat side still it's all facing you and that's what we're going to do so now I want to chain three into the same chain space we're going to work a double crochet the chain three does not count as a stitch you can also work a chain two if you want to then we're going to work a double crochet in every stitch around so I hope you don't mind me just making this little small sample because I've already made the bigger version So we're going to continue around putting a double crochet in every stitch. When we come around and we're ready to join, you've got a double crochet in the last chain. What we're going to do is join and we're not joining to the chain three like we would do in, in most projects. We're going to join into the top of the first double crochet which is here. We're going to join into there. So if you've made my invisible or well, almost invisible seam hat, it's a cream hat that I made quite a while ago, this is basically using the same technique. We don't join to the chain three, we ignore that. Of course you could have a chain two as well. And what, hap what happens is uh, when we join to the top of here, it squashes this gap up so we don't have that ugly seam that sometimes we can get when we join our rounds, which drives me nuts when I see it. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is chain three, we're gonna double crochet into that same space. And every row until we have the length of our cow is exactly the same from now on. We join at the end of the row to the first double crochet stitch. Then we chain three and double crochet in the same space and double crochet all the way around. I'm going to crochet around and I'll meet you back here. When we get around to the end we're going to join into the top of the double crochet which is there ignoring that chain three so there we go you'll have a much bigger version what is that? It might actually fit me as a bracelet maybe not it's a bit small but you have like I said a much bigger version and you will repeat this until you have as many rows as you want and let me just grab my proper version and I'll see how many rows we've got Sorry, it's rounds. Rounds because we're joining them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 13 rounds. Can't fit it in the screen. I have 13 rounds. This is a... It's not very wide. Let's see how wide it is. Where's that tape measure gone? It's not very wide. It's... Uh, it is... 7 inches. Switch 7 inches. Or... 18 yeah about 18 centimeters so it's not very wide at all you could use you could make it a lot wider and that would scrunch down when you're wearing I think that would look really awesome too but I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it like that I think yeah I think I'll leave it like that so once we get to this stage it's time to add the hood and what we're going to do is we're going to divide our opening, actually that's the bottom, this is the top because that's where the yarn is joined here. So my, my yarn is still attached to my project, I haven't cut it off yet. So that's what the seam looks like. Can you see, it? you can, can see it, but it's just less obvious than when sometimes we join and it looks really terrible. So what I'm actually going to do, I am going to cut that off so that way that we can put our seam at the back centre instead of being on the side of our work. So I'll just cut that off, but we can crochet over that to make that disappear. So what I want you to do now is count the stitches around the outside of your work. Like I said, I had 100 stitches. So you're going to count every stitch all the way around the outside. Then I want you to divide it by three. 
Now I have a hundred stitches and it doesn't um, equally divide by three but the closest number is 33. So we're going to work with 33. Then you're going to go to your back seam and you're going to count that amount of numbers or that amount of stitches all the way around and then put a stitch marker. So my number is 33 so I counted from the center back which is here I counted 33 stitches in that direction. I put a stitch marker, then went back to the center back seam, and then I counted 33 stitches in this direction and put a stitch marker. Okay? And then the larger section, so the two thirds, because we've divided it by three, this is really hard to fit into the camera. The larger section, which is around the back seam, is going to be where the hood is, and the smaller section, which is around the front, is going to be like the open section of the, the hood part. Okay, so this back seam section is where we're going to crochet across, and we're going to leave this part around here open. So what we're going to do now, so this is our back seam, where my yarn is been cut there, we're going to go to the stitch marker that's on the right hand side. If you're left handed you will go to the one that's on the left hand side because what we're going to do now is we're going to join our yarn back in and we're going to complete the hood section. So, grabbing our crochet hook, I'm going to take that out, pop that back in We're going to attach our yarn back. And I'm going to work a chain two. You can do a chain three, you can do a standing double crochet. Um, however you start your row, if you want to do that different, it's perfectly fine. So when we're crocheting, we're going to have the nice side looking at us at first. So we're going to just crochet and we're going to crochet I'm using the double crochet stitch and we're going to go all the way around until we get to our stitch marker. I'm up to my stitch marker, I've just gone into there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to chain two, I'm going to turn my work around and we're going to work back across. We're not going to <coughs> Yeah, my tongue is not in right today. We're going to crochet all the way across and we're going to repeat this for quite a few rows. And to tell you the truth, I'm making this pattern up as I go, so I'm not sure how many I need to do. But in the next video clip, I can tell you how many I've done. And of course, if it's for a child or someone with a bigger, smaller head, whichever, it might be different from this one, you can use a different amount of rows. And as a good guide, um, I have a hat sizing chart that's on my website. I will put the link in, in the description box. And that will give you hat heights. So you can use the hat height measurement as the guide for the hood section. So how many rows that we're going to do just for the hood section. Um, don't measure this bit that we've already done just for the hood section here. And that is what I'm going to go by for the hat height. And we may need to add a bit to that because it's going to be coming down around sort of the back of our neck. So I will measure it and see what happens. Like I said, making it up as a go because that's how I roll. So continue on and I will meet up with you when we have the rows done in the next video clip for the rows on your hat. So I have the hood section length finished. It's not joined at the top. But I just wanted to measure it to show you how big or how long I've made it. I've made mine 9 inches or about 23 centimetres. And this is actually the height 
just double checking that this is the height that is recommended on my head size chart for an adult of my size head so that's good that worked out really well and I've actually tried this on to make sure it fits so what we're going to do is we're going to do a chain three Oh, sorry chain two if you've been doing chain two or chain three it's up to you it doesn't matter but just stick to what you did on the sides and we're going to slip stitch and this is the back piece we're going to slip stitch into the chain two over there so the top of the chain two we're going to do a slip stitch we want to make that snug Then we're going to work into the front section. So this is the front section and that's the back section, that bit that's over here. Into the front section we're going to work a double crochet. Into the next available stitch on the back we're going to work a slip stitch. Pull snug, double crochet in the front. So we're just working the next available stitch along our row. On the back we're going to work a slip stitch pull snug, double crochet into the front piece and slip stitch into the back. So we've already worked this stitch so we just go to the next available stitch, pull snug, again double crochet in the front and then slip stitch into the back and we're going to repeat this all the way across, pull snug, we're going to repeat that all the way across until our hood is joined. So I have my <laughs> Just won't fit in the camera will it? I can't zoom out far enough. So we've got our hooded cow, I finished off, I sewn in my ends and this is where, I'm going to turn it right way, this is the hood section and this is the cow section and this is where the hood comes down and we're going to join our yarn into the part down here. I just want to join it a couple of stitches before the, the corner bit that's there because we're going to decrease around the corner just to make it look nice just attaching our yarn. You could choose to work a single crochet around and I think I might choose a half half double crochet. You know me, I'm a half double crochet, quite a fan. So when we come to the corner section we're going to work a decrease so we're going to go into the stitch pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the next stitch, so we're going up to the, this is the side of the hood now, going in there and working a decrease and that will go around the corner nicely. Then what we want to do is all the way up the side of the hood, work a half double crochet and try and work evenly if you go into here it's going to make a big hole so what I'm going to do is go into the side of the stitch and just try and work under there and it won't make such a big hole a little bit fiddly but it looks a lot better oh don't know what that noise was it wasn't a burp excuse me I opened my mouth and the noise came out so it's just into here it was more like a gurgle I just ate lunch lovely subject bodily noises And then we're just working into the side there. So work all the way around until you get back to the other corner that's around the other side somewhere. There it is there. And work around until we get to here and I'll show you what to do. So I'm around the other side and this is the corner. So we're going to work that decrease again. So we're going to go into the stitch, pull up, leave that on there, wrap your yarn, go into the next stitch pull up, got five loops on your hook and then pull through all of those loops. 
and then we're going to continue around until we get back to the beginning. When we get back to the beginning we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet. And we're going to cut our yarn off. If you would like to work another round you are more than welcome. And when you get to that corner again these two stitches here work your decreases into there. That will make it curve round more. But I'm only going to do one row on mine. So I'm going to cut my yarn off. And I'm going to sew my ends off camera. This is looking really cool. You know what it reminded me of before when I was sewing in the ends off camera? One of those Ewok. You know the Ewoks on, um, is it Star Wars? Oh god, I've really never watched any of those movies. <gasps> I know, I can hear people going, what? Really? I think it's Star Wars. Little Ewoks, he lives in the forest. He's so cute. Yeah, it just reminded me of that. Anyway, I think it's very, very cute. For our supplies, we're going to need a teddy bear coloured yarn. This is Red Heart Super Saver in warm brown. I think that's very teddy bearish. And I have a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. I have quite loose tension, so I need quite a small hook to get tight tension. But anything that's going to give you reasonably firm tension, because you want the ears to be able to stand up. Going to need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle with a large eye. Makes it a lot easier to sew on your projects. What we're going to do is we're going to make a magic ring. There's many different ways to do that. Do what you're comfortable with. I'm going to go in there and we're going to do a chain one. We're going to work five single crochet into the center. make that loop smaller. Now what we want to do is work two single crochet in every stitch. So we're going to chain one, turn our work. The chain one doesn't count as a stitch so we're going to go into this first stitch twice with a single crochet. Into the next one again work two single crochet. Do this in each stitch around. Because we started with five on the beginning row, we should have ten if we've done it correctly, ten stitches. Yes, I do. So we can pull that slip knot or magic ring closed. There we go. What we want to do now is chain one and turn our work. We're going to single crochet once into the first stitch. Into the next one we're going to do two. In the next one we're going to do one. I'm going to repeat that around. So two in the next. One in the next. Two. And one and two and one and then two there we go two in that last one and you'll find that it's not really straight across the bottom but when we sew it on we want it like that because it's going to curve like a teddy bear ear <laughs> so cute. So if we want to continue on, we're going to do a chain one, turn our work, we're going to do a single crochet into the next two stitches. And if you've made a hat, this is the increasing exactly like we do a hat. So that might give you an idea what we're doing. 
So into the next one we're going to work two single crochets. Work one single crochet in the next two stitches. Two into the next. One single crochet into the next two. And we're going to repeat this around. We're going to turn our work, chain one, single crochet in the next, so in the first one and the next two as well. So we're going to three single crochet. Into the next stitch, we're going to work two single crochet and one single crochet into the next three stitches. Two single crochet into the next stitch. This is also known as an increase. Into the next three stitches we're going to work one double crochet, uh, one single crochet sorry. Into the next stitch we're going to work two single crochet, one single crochet in the next three. And repeat this all around. Next row, chain one and turn. We're going to work one single crochet in every stitch. So at any time that this becomes big enough, you're most welcome to stop making it. Of course, but I'm going to show you depending on what size you want to make it. And also if you're using thinner yarn, it will need a few more rows. Going to chain one and turn and work single crochet in every stitch across. I'll meet you when we get to the end. So when we get to the end what we're going to do is we're going to do a chain one and turn and we're going to slip stitch around the end, around the edge sorry. And the tighter that you work your slip stitches the more the ear will curve in. Now I just did a practice round and I did it really tight and it really curved over. So I'm going to do a mixture between, <laughs> halfway between tight and loose. So I'm not pulling on my yarn, I'm just slip stitching around. And you'll notice, see how it's starting to curve already? So once we've done this, what we're going to do is grab our other colour. Now depending what colour you got, I'm thinking I'm going to use pink. We're going to make the ear exactly the same, but we're going to use less rows. Gonna is such an Aussie word. Going to use less rows. So that the pink section is smaller inside the ear and it looks like the inside of an ear. You could use it, you didn't have to use pink, you could use any colour that you like. So I didn't work that really tight but see how it started to curl up? Looks really cute. So you can adjust that by the tension of your ear. Okay so I'm going to make the other section and it's just a repeat of what we just did. You're just probably going to use one maybe two less rounds. Uh, sorry rows because we've worked in rows. So on this one I've done one, two, three. I did three rows and then I did my slip stitching and 
fit and oh and on both of the ears I've left quite a bit of yarn I would say that's half a meter 50 centimeters which uh, I really have no idea what that is in inches about 25 inches that that's a big guess though so we just want to finish off that What we're going to do is we're going to thread the cream one or the smaller one. Oh, I said I was going to use pink, but when I went to my stash, I didn't have any pink. I only had like really, really bright pink. And I didn't think that was going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide that in there. Then what we're going to do is just stitch this down and I'm going to stitch it all the way around the ear. So I'm just using what I call whip stitch. So we're just going to whip stitch this all around. And when we work here, what we want to do is grab the back loop and then just a loop from the front. We don't want to go right through our work, otherwise you'll have the white stitching or whatever colour you've chosen on the back of your work. So I'm around the side of the ear now, so we're going to grab a loop from the front of the brown section and then the back loop of the slip stitch. And this way, when we stitch it, you won't see the stitching on the back of the ear. So I'll just do... Just do a couple. So, and you want to make your stitches as close as you can to the work. See how there's none, none on the back? So as close as you can, from here to here, you want to just grab that and grab that. See how they're close together and that way your stitches will be really small. You want to repeat this all the way around until we get back to here. Once we have our ears done and I will be showing you how to sew them together so they can sit like this, we want to position them onto our head. Now if you don't have a foam head you can use a balloon and then I would suggest wrapping it in a, a tea towel or some fabric like a t-shirt or a jumper or a sweater and then you can just attach it with pins but be very careful if you're using the balloon because you don't want to pop it so I've just pinned this onto the side of the head I haven't actually sewn this on you can see the tail hanging down there so play around with it and you sometimes you might want to put them up like that if, if you change where you put them it can look like a different animal and also this ear you don't have to sew it together like I'm going to but this is how I'm going to do it. You could leave it open. They would look a lot like monkey ears if you left them open. Open. So hang tight and I will just show you how to sew them together. It's really easy but I'll just show you how I've done it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold the ear and then just put the edges together. Grab my yarn and just go through both pieces. I'm going to work all the way across until I get to the other side. When you get to the other end, what I'm going to do is just go through. And before that loop closes up, I'm going to put my needle through the loop. And then just pull that tight. And that will just fasten that off. That will just fasten that off so that it won't get all loose here. And then we're going to stitch it to the the hat section of our project. To sew them to our project this is the top seam of the top of the hat and I've gone down one two three four five rows and I'm just sewing along the row and I'm getting the seam that we've sewn together and I'm placing it along that row like that. And when I stitch it on I'm only going through the front loops of the crochet, I'm not sticking it right through my work because you'll have 
the yarn shop on the other side. Of course, if you're using the same color to join as your scoody, it won't really matter. But as you can see, I've got two different colors and that will show up. So I'm just sewing along. When you get to the end, you want to flip it up and then sew down on this side too, just to make sure it's secure. When we get to the end, we just want to secure this off. So what we're going to do is go through a stitch and again, go through that loop. And then you can sew your end in to hide it. I'm actually putting it between the two layers. Oops. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'll have to sew it because I thought I could go between the two layers but there isn't a layer on the other side so I can put it under the stitches there to hide that end quickly go back across and I've skipped one of the little stitches there so that the yarn is getting trapped pull that out and snip that off and then we're going to do the same for the other side make sure you've got your ear facing the correct direction so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please share your creation on our Facebook page and also our Google+. Plus. We would love to see the colours and the style that you have come up with. I think this project would look really cute for all sizes. Please subscribe to my newsletter now on my website. This will be delivered straight to your email inbox. It is full with crochet goodness and it's got lots of free patterns and great ideas. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crochet. For our supplies, we're going to need, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> crochet file. Oh, it looks like a Pac-Man. I don't even know what the sound a Pac-Man makes.